I'm telling you, you don't want to allow him around your back, man. You just, you don't ever want him to get behind you. Keep your back against the wall all the time. What is going on, YouTube junkies? Welcome back to the show. And welcome back to another portion of the house that never sleeps. Got on my blue chip pick cap. Thanks, Kip, and for the other goodies, too. Uh, we figured we'd talk about setups today. Something a little bit different. You know, I do a lot of guitar setups, and I see a lot of guitar setups on YouTube. But uh, a lot of people don't, not many people, rather, talk about the setups and, you know, what the things that can change them. Uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about was setting your really fine setup guitars, setting your action really low, and, uh, you know, very little neck relief. Some people play with a straight neck, no neck relief at all. If you have your guitar set up that way, and you've got the accent as low as you can possibly get it, and maybe no neck relief at all, straight neck, you know, you're going to be tinkering with that setup a lot more frequently than you would if you ra raised the action, you know, and had a little neck relief in it. A fine setup, like I do here, I don't do them all that way, but I do the, the ones that want them that way. A really fine setup, man, the slightest little thing will change it. You'll find every day, every couple, three days, or twice a week, you'll find a, a, maybe a little bit of string buzz. You know, something moved, something changed. Maybe you had a straight neck, and for whatever reason, the neck decided to bow backwards a little bit. Maybe the truss rod got uh, really uh, hot from being cold, and it forced the neck back just enough to make... You know, like a hump in your center of your fretboard. Back bow is what we're on calling it. And, you know, you got string buzz. You think, oh, shit, what are we going to do now? What caused that? Well, a lot of things can cause it. Heat, humidity, uh, cold, and lack of humidity. Just all kinds of crap can, can cause, you know, your neck relief to change. If you change string gauge, you just ruin your setup. It's not going to be the same. You know, if you set a guitar up for, with light gauge strings, and then you put medium gauge strings on it, you're going to put more stress on the entire guitar. Those medium gauge strings are heavier. They're going to pull more, pull more uh, relief into the neck. If you got an acoustic, they're going to pull, put more uh, stress on your bridge back here. More chance of a belly forming. And same goes if you have, say, medium gauge and you're set up for that and you go to light gauge, then the opposite happens. You're going to have, the neck's going to start pulling back. And, you know, you don't have as much string stress there. So your neck pulls back. You have to adjust the truss rod for that. And your action's going to change in both directions. Whether you go up in gauge or down in it, your action is going to change. Unless you have a very solid guitar. Now, some guitars... Are just solid as a rock. That little D15 guitar I worked on, the last one that I worked on, I've got, I think I have like three D15s on the channel here, and I've worked on a lot more of them than that. I just happen to have, only have three here, but the last one was a very, very solid guitar, man. That thing, I tuned it up here and let it set for 48 hours, and this was after it had strings off of it for a week. Tuned it up to A440 pitch, came back 48 hours and checked it, and it had not moved. Nothing. Usually, all guitars, after having the stress off of them that long, put the stress back on them, all the strings back on them, bring it up to pitch. Usually, you can come back a couple days later, check the tuning, and you'll see that it has dropped a tiny bit. It's just a few cents. But something moved in the guitar. You know, and that's what changed the uh, pitch of it. Anyways, getting back to uh, uh, your setup here. Changing string gauge, that changes everything, man. If you're set up for medium gauge, you put light gauge on, you know, unless that guitar is really very solid, the way the D15 was, you're going to know it. You're going to notice your setup. It'll either be worse or unplayable. Uh, on a softer guitar, a lot of electric guitars are very soft, like this too. I mean, man, there's, you can just move like that and you can hear the tuning fluctuate. Acoustics too. But I see that a lot more in electric guitars than I do acoustics. Usually, usually, not always, but usually, acoustic guitars are fairly solid. I mean, they have to be to hold up the way they're built and stuff, you know. 
you, you don't have like an electric solid body guitar where you can just screw everything down into the wood and uh, you know you don't have to worry about it bellying up or anything like that I have seen the screws get pulled out before or stripped out for whatever reason when you <clears throat> change your string gauge if, let's say if you go from uh, Let's say you go from medium gauge to lights, okay? You're going to get that back bow that I talked about a few minutes ago. Your action's going to drop when that happens. You're usually too low. You get more buzzing. You have to adjust the truss for that. But when you do that and you get that back bow, you get the tiniest ever so little bit more of, of string uh, scale length. When you, when you bow your neck back, you're pulling away from the saddle back here. You're getting a little bit more scale length. Do you know what that means? It means your intonation's going to change a little bit too. And not for the good. Because, you know, if it's set up very finely, I'm talking about. Now, I've, I see a lot of luthiers set guitars up. I have them brought here to me. And then the guy say, man, I just had this to so-and-so. And he set it up for me. And I don't like it for whatever reason. Well, it's easy to see, man, whenever you've got, the, you know, 30 thousandths. First fret action up here, nut action, 25, 30 thousandths high. Did the guy not see that? Did he not file the nut slots down? And that's another thing. I'm going to make a video about this, filing nut slots. The right gauge for whatever string you have. If you file nut slot out for a .056 gauge string, uh, .054 is going to set way down in there a lot farther. Your nut action probably is going to be a lot closer than it was with the 56 gauge, 0 .056 gauge strings, you all know what I'm talking about, I don't always have to say .0, 56 gauge, it's going to change big time, if you have a 56 on there, and you have your nut uh, slot cut for a 56, and you put say a, a 52, or a 50, or 48 in that, it's going to set down in that slot deeper, and your first fret action can be lower when that happens, like I say, the back bow is going to make your string scale length longer. Your intonation is going to be different. So, you know, the point of this video is just basically to say the finer you set a guitar up, the closer knit you set everything, the more you're going to have to tinker with it. You know, the more frequently you're going to have to fool with it. Uh, whereas if you have like, uh, I don't know, 564 on the bass string and 464 on the the high E string and 12 fret that setup you don't have to mess with much but sometimes I ship guitars across the country or across the planet and sometimes even that will change all of them will change like I said before I can't set a guitar up here perfectly and send it on the other side of the country and expect it those measurements to be exactly what I took because they will not be every time they will not be there again soft guitars fluctuate more a very sturdy, stable guitar fluctuates less and it'll be very close to what I said it. But uh, just a few ideas there with a really finely tuned setup. And you say your neck does get hot and draw back a little bit and give you a little bit more uh, back bow than it was set for. You're going to notice it, man. If you have your, your settings at 364s and 464s on the high E and low E strings down at 12th fret, you're going to notice that. And it doesn't take very much with a very fine tuned setting like that, set up like that. It doesn't take very much. To, and like I say, every few days, a couple times a week, maybe more frequently than that, you're going to have to tinker with it to keep, keep it there, keep it set there. Uh, electric guitars, like I say, they're the same thing. I've got this one tuned down now, getting ready to work on it. But anyways, wanted to throw that out there to y'all and uh, tell you, your nut, your nut action can change, probably will, if you change string gauge. The stress on that guitar is going to change, so that's going to make your neck relief change. It's going to make your string action here at the 12th fret change. It's going to change your string scale length because the neck's either going to move, it's either going to have more, it's either going to pull more relief into it with heavier strings, or more back bow into it because you went from heavy to light. That's going to change your string scale length ever so slightly. On some guitars, it changes the intonation because of that. 
Uh, just things to think about, you know, if you set your guitar up really finely or if you, if you, uh, you know, allow a little bit of room there for error. Humidity, hot, hot cold temperatures, wet, dry, uh, all these things affect it. Like say you pick your guitar up one day and it's been playing fine, all of a sudden you got string buzz all over the place, man. People call me up, what's the matter? How come got all the strings buzz? And I say, well, you probably got too much back bow. And then they tell me they put light gauge strings on. There's the answer right there. It also changes. Let's say this guitar here. I've got uh, 0.013 to 0.056 is on it, okay? That's what this guitar here was designed for. If I drop that and I go down to, say, a 10 on the first uh, high E and a 48 on the low E. It's even going to change the sound of the guitar. It's not only going to change all that stuff I just told you about the setup. It's going to be less stress on the guitar and it's not going to vibrate that top the way the top was designed and meant to vibrate. Same thing with the guitars that were designed and built around light gauge strings. You rip them off and put mediums on it or medium heavies it's going to change the entire way that guitar wood top vibrates. It's not going to vibrate. All those braces, everything in there is not going to work the way they were designed to. Your setup's going to be different. There are going to be a bunch of things changed when you change string gauge uh, concerning your setup. Well, your instrument, too. So just, uh, you know, a few pointers I want to throw out there. I'm getting hoarse, man. I guess it's better than being cow. <coughs> it's been cold here, man. Good Lord, it got cold for it. Like... 30 or 31 days we were below freezing, I think that's what they said. And it ain't even hardly in halfway into winter yet. Winter just starting, really. Anyways, enough about the weather. Kip, thanks for the cap, and thank you, you guys, for watching. I'd also like to take a minute to thank all the subscribers, uh, all you new subscribers coming along, man. You're coming in like, uh, oh, like pouring water. <laughs> and I appreciate that. You old subscribers, too, and you patron, uh, patrons. I love you guys, and I thank you for keeping it here. And uh, let's make a nice new year out of this 2018 year. I'll do my part. I'll try. Cheers to you. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. I wonder where he's at now. Check this out. In below zero. It's a high of uh, 13 today. That's it. That's pretty cold for right here. Hold on.